Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Incognito Islamic Productions. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marriage with Sayyida Sophia is another topic that the critics of Islam all can take up. They say, first, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he married a woman after killing her husband and father. So how could she be happy or even willing for it? Second, they state the rules of Idda, the waiting period were violated in this marriage. In the following, we will explain the whole issue in detail. From a hadith in Sayyid Bukhari and elsewhere as to what actually happened. Hadith Bukhari states, We conquered Khaybar and we took the captives and the booty was collected. Bihya, he came and he said, Ya Messenger of Allah, give me a slave girl from the captives. The Prophet, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, go and take any slave girl. He took Sophia, bin Huyay. A man came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you gave Sophia bin Huyay to Dihya, and she is the chief mistress of the tribes of Qurayza and Al Nadir, and she befits none except you, Ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, Bring him along with her. So Dihya, he came with her, and when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met them, he said to Dihya, Take any slave girl other than her from the captives. And as he added, the Prophet then manumitted her, freed her, and married her. Thabit asked, O oh Anas, O oh Abu Hamza, what did the Prophet pay her as mahab, as a dower, a dowry? He said herself, her freedom was her mahab, her dowry. For he manumitted her and then married her. Anas added, while on the way, Um Sulaim dressed her for marriage. And at the night time, she sent her as a bride to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, was a bridegroom and he said, Whoever has anything of food should bring it. He spread out a leather sheet for food and some brought dates and others cooking butter. And I think he, Anas, he mentioned a sawiq. So they prepared a dish of hais, a kind of meal, and that was the walima, the marriage banquet of Allah's Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam This hadith is found in Sayyid Bukhari Hadith number 358 Were the rules of Idda violated? The following hadith needs a careful reading Abu Sa'id al-Khudri He narrated that the following statement From Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Regarding the captives of Al-Tas There must be no intercourse with a pregnant woman Till she gives birth Or with one who is not pregnant till she has had one menstrual period. This hadith is in Abu Dawood, hadith number 2157, and classified as Sahih by Shaykh al-Abani. This hadith lays down the rule that a man is not allowed to have intimate relations with a captive woman till she is clean from her menses. This is to avoid any confusion in the lineage. Now considering the fact that Sophia was actually a captive woman, who was then freed and married to by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the light of the above hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was to wait for her being clean from a menstrual course before consummating the marriage. And this is exactly what he did. We read in Sayyid Bukhari, narrated Anas ibn Malik, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam selected her for himself and set out with her. And when we reached a place called Sat al-Sahbah, Sophia became clean from her menses. Then Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, married her. Hadith in Bukhari, number three thousand eight hundred and eighty-nine. Was Sophia willing for the marriage? Answer the question whether Sophia was willing for the marriage or not. Nobody's conjecture, but our own words can make things clear. The following narration explains in detail. When Sophia came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to her, Among the Jews, your father did not stop in his enmity towards me until Allah destroyed him. She said, O oh Allah's Messenger, indeed Allah says in his book, No one will take anyone else burden. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, Make your choice. If you would choose Islam, I'll select you for myself. And if you choose Judaism, I'll set you free and send you to your people.
She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, indeed I longed for Islam and testified for you even before you gave me this invitation when I came to you. I have no guardian amongst the Jews, neither father nor brother, and I prefer Islam over this belief. Allah and His Messenger are dear to me, then freedom and to return to my people. Narrated Ibn Sa'd. Lest one should doubt this narration as to how Sophia know before embracing Islam that Allah says in the Quran, no one will take anyone else's burden. It needs to be clarified that even in the Jewish scripture, the same is mentioned. For example, in Ezekiel 18.20. And it is comprehensible that she coming from a Jewish background knew this well. How about the companion standing armed outside their camp and Sophia's feelings. Unaware of such an affectionate talk between Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Sophia, one of the pious companions, Abu Ayyub, he stood armed outside their camp for the fear that Sophia, whose father and brother were killed in the battle, may try to harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibn Sa'd. Some missionaries referred to this happening giving an impression as if Sophia was forced into marriage and was really unhappy. While the very conversation quoted above belies such a notion, it must also be known that Abu Ayyub was standing there voluntarily and the Prophet wasalam, had not made him stand there as he knew the actual position of Sophia. The pious companion in his innocence didn't know and a cunning polemicist in their evil designs run away from the fact that much before Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu reached Khaybar, the All-Wise, the Almighty had sown the seeds of love of the Prophet in the heart of Sophia. When Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reached Khaybar while Sophia was a bride at her place, she saw in her dream that a sun, and in some narrations a moon, came into her lap. She mentioned it before her husband, and he said, By Allah, you do not wish for anyone except the king who has come upon us, meaning Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah, he conquered Khaybar, and her husband was killed. And from that time of the dream, she loved that the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may marry her. And this is in Tabarani Kabir, Hadith number 19,667. Ibn Umar, he narrated, In the eye of Sophia was a scar. And the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, said to her, What is this scar in your eye? And she said, I mentioned before my husband that I saw a moon falling into my lap in a dream. So he slapped me and said, Do you long for the king of Yathrib? Meaning the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. She said, There was none more hateful to me in the Lord's Messenger وسلم, as he killed my father and husband. But the Prophet وسلم, explained, O oh, Sophia, your father has instigated the Arabs against me and did so and so. And he kept on explaining until that feeling of hatred vanished from me. And this also is in Tabarani Kabir, hadith number 19,668. And Sheikh Al-Abani has classified both of them as Sahih. Taking together all the narrations above, we come to know that Sophia had a feeling of affection for the Prophet وسلم, before they met. Tabarani, Hadith number 19,667, as we read. When her father and husband were killed in the battle, she developed some feelings of hatred for the Prophet وسلم, for natural reasons. But when the Prophet وسلم, explained to her what all her father did to him, she realized that her father met such an end because of his own deeds and so her ill feelings for the prophet completely vanished and she was left with the feelings of love for the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the all wise and almighty had put in her heart through the dream truly unique are the ways of my lord indeed allah knows best